Join us now. Sisterhood is powerful. The battle cry of the women's liberation movement rings out down New York's Fifth Avenue as more than 10,000 militant feminists stage a one-day strike for equal rights. The militants chose the 50th anniversary of the constitutional amendment giving women the vote to protest against all kinds of discrimination which they say they suffer in a world run largely by men. They demanded job equality, free abortions and free child care centres for working mothers. Their leader, Mrs Betty Frieden, had no doubts about the importance of the strike and what it would achieve. It's going to achieve uh, the, uh, uh, the, a new uh, politics in America. It, the, the coalition that we have found in action, the unprecedented solidarity that women are showing today, have shown today in America, August 26th, um, taking to the streets, marching in concert, overcoming all differences of, of, of age, generation, of, of, of race, of class, uh, of economics, of man-made politics, uh, are united our solidarity in our own behalf, in behalf of, of these aims of complete equality, uh, education and employment, uh, child care centers, the right to free abortion on demand. This will continue as a political coalition to achieve the unfinished revolution, to win the unfinished revolution of women's equality, and to use all the means of, of, of political action, of confrontation, of the use of our economic power, as we've done today in the beginning of the uh, economic boycott. And above all, I think its focus will take uh, form of electing to office not the best man any longer. This will be the last election when women are going to choose uh, uh, between the best of two men to represent them. We are going to be running ourselves and electing ourselves so that it will not take 50 years to get 50 women in the U.S. Senate. Today, there's one woman out of 100 uh, senators that d determines the major foreign domestic policy of the U.S. as 1% uh, representing 53% of the population. We intend to have 50% of the Senate seats, 50% of the university faculties, 50% in, in administrative decision-making roles in, in, in every business and profession. Seven years ago, in her book, The Feminine Mystique, Mrs. Frieden claimed that a male-dominated society had condemned women to a life of domestic trivia. Four years ago, she launched the National Organization for Women, many of whose members are brief with facts and figures, ready to confront any man who's the courage to argue. Well, the main demand, of course, is equal, equal rights. Equal rights to have a job, to have respect, to not be viewed as a piece of meat. Equal rights to, uh, to set forth our own humanity, equal rights to get into graduate programs, to get into schools, to training programs. We're the bottom third of the employment in terms of pay. We represent nonetheless 34% of the workforce, yet we're the first to be laid off and the last to be hired. There aren't frivolous demands at all. We just want what men have had all these years. And what but we don't want the bad things that they took with them, like male chauvinism like oppressing people in order to get there. We don't intend to emulate you gentlemen on that. The headquarters of the women's liberation movement in America is a small rented room on top of a restaurant in the middle of New York. It was from here that the 24-hour strike for equality was organized. The feminists believe the time has come for a complete reappraisal of women's place in American society. They also believe they'll get nothing without a fight, and that their kind of direct action is the only way to achieve their aim. They can claim some successes already. The New York City authorities have banned all male clubs and restaurants, and a constitutional amendment on women's rights is now before the Senate. Excuse me, what do you think this st uh, strike will achieve? Well, I think the point is now to um, inform other women that the Women's Liber Liberation Organization exists. And um, I think the strike is just a start. And I think it will achieve, um, you know, the knowledge that this kind of thing exists. And other women will realize that they're not alone. And um, I think that the amendment is important to be pushed through. But I do think this is just the beginning. It's not. Why are you going on strike? Um, because I believe in the three demands, and I think it'll accomplish something. But like I said, I think it's only a beginning, and I think, you know, there's a long fight ahead. The women's organizations handed out 50,000 leaflets in New York alone, urging both housewives and career women to give up a day's work for equal rights. But not all women agreed with them. Excuse me, do you agree with this women's liberation movement? No, I don't. Are you, are you going on strike? No, I'm not. Why not? 
because I like the way life the way it is. A woman's place is with a man that on top of him in this world. It's too materialistic a society as it is. Yes, I agree with some of it. I think some of it is a very good idea and should should really go into effect. Are you joining the strike? No, I'm not. There are some women saying that if they don't get what they want, they should stop making love to their husbands on certain days. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I really don't. This is not a bedroom war, although it affects what goes on in the bedroom. Certainly, there's too much hostility uh, uh, corrupting uh, and, and spoiling uh, love and joy and, 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 and dehumanizing and depersonalizing sex because of the bind of inequality that torments men as well as women in this country. But this is not a war to be fought in the bedroom. Besides the National Organization for Women, the largest group in the women's liberation movement, there are several smaller groups, often with bizarre names like Bitch, Witch, Bread and Roses, the Red Stockings, and the Radical Mothers. If all these were to come together under one banner with a common policy, women's liberation would be a formidable movement indeed. Last month, 75 feminists occupied the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor and declared they'd stay there until Congress passed the Constitutional Amendment for Women's Rights. The demonstrators said they'd chosen the statue to draw attention to the irony of a female symbolizing liberty when no woman in America was free. Another target for attack by the liberationists is the growing number of nude films, strip clubs and pornographic bookshops, which they say illustrate the way men treat women as sexual objects. And like its counterpart, the feminists have a similar complaint against certain kinds of advertising in newspapers and magazines. Cosmopolitan is a marketing vehicle geared to selling products representing women as sexual objects. At the same time, its editorial content is a subtle, persistent, and undeclared support of the very products it advertises overtly. Now the tagline of Silver Thin commercials is, cigarettes are like women, the best are thin and rich. Um, we feel that in addition to being inner pollutants, uh, the advertising for Silver Thins are also social pollutants. They pollute the minds of women. Ivory liquid, as you know, is a product of Procter & Gamble. We object to this, uh, the ivory liquid detergent advertising campaign because it emphasizes the youth cult, that beauty is only skin deep, and that one of the purposes of the product is to keep young. We feel strongly that middle-aged and older people have something to contribute to this society besides soft hands and clean glasses in competition with other women. The success of the women's strike surprised even the most optimistic of its organizers. It thought about 50,000 women took part in various protests across the country, and Betty Friedan is convinced the crusade will become worldwide. This strike has already worked. This strike has already worked because it has shown politicians that, w that, that, that the reality of women, it has made women visible, it has made our demands, it has put our demands on the political agenda and they are there to stay and they will be given priority and it has shown us our power to achieve the changes that are needed and, and to elect our, our, our own to office. The next step is from America, the world. Next year, a worldwide strike of women on uh, the unfinished business of equality. We are all sisters and join us in confronting your unfinished business of equality and uh, uh, perhaps in a year from now we should have a worldwide strike.